other part, I'm going to actually go to here. No, not there. You know, I don't think we're going to have time to write a program, so I'm not going to write a program. I'm just going to show you a few programs, and I'm going to go through the lines of code. Well, it's kind of boring, but uh, I'll show you on fire because it's a pretty simple program. And you'll see kind of what we're doing there. Oh, fired. And, uh, oh, fired. And you'll see what we're doing. Start. Uh, since the 68K is fucking leet, um, you have the user uh, um, stack pointer as an interrupt vector. It's not an interrupt, but it loads it up straight away, and you don't have to set up a stack pointer if you don't leave supervisor mode. And we don't leave supervisor mode in the 68K, in the, in the Sega Genesis because there's nothing really to secure. As you're not, you're not going to run Linux anytime soon on it. There's no memory management unit or anything like that. We have the auto vectors here. Uh, external interrupt, horizontal and vertical. Ink gen bin. This is a special binary. I have tools that on the CD2 to generate that binary. It just has information. With the actual ROM that boots, uh, it reads that information. And a lot of emulators, too. Think of it like as an INS header if you write Nintendo stuff. Security shit, jump main. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. This just sets up the auto vectors so you can call them. Um, and these are the interrupts. Push shit on, push stuff on stack. Um, jump to a vertical hook, which is a pointer to a function. Vertical hook, horizontal hook, and external hook. So let's go to main. Main's real simple. <laughs> Header for the library, uh, horizontal scroll buffer, uh, because we, you have a limited number of writes you can do to VRAM while the thing is drawing on the screen. You have more writes while the thing is on a vertical blank. Uh, but you can do DMA and it's real quick. So that's the quickest way to do it. And you can take advantage of being able to write some more VRAM that way. So we have H scroll in RAM pretty much as told by the compiler. And if you want to come to me, I'll tell you how to set up the compiler and everything like that. Like chips, just make sure everything is zero. No routine, that's a function that does nothing. Uh, gen on fire, that draws a genesis on fire. It's actually part of a demo. I'm not going to do the demo because I don't feel satisfied with it. So let's make, oh, let's go to, no, that's cool because I'll tell you about it later. So this is gen on fire. Set shit up. Set the modes. Set up where the scroll bases are. C0, that sort of stuff. Blah. Write to VRAM. This is a little function. Writes run length and code to this address from here uh, and the size is this. No routine, we have a vertical uh, interrupt. Fill H scroll buffer with a zero. This is a macro that's in main.h. Uh, screen on. That sets up a number of registers to turn on the screen. And I won't get into the rest, I'll just run it. But that's how you'd set it up. If you turn the screen on at that point, you would see whatever was you drew on the editor. So I, um, I don't have time to, to get into it. Uh, make, better write, make clean, make. Run gen rom dot bin. Now I don't know if this will dump me into kind of a weird mode or anything like that. That's the Genesis on fire. It's waving the uh, H scroll buffer uh, with a sign table. And uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, not yet. I was just wondering what the time. Okay. You, it rotates the sign buffer uh, with the sign buffer, the H scroll. This is plane A. This is plane B. This is plane B high. It gets drawn over everything. So you can have that wave. You don't wave that. I'll show you another example here. And actually, that loads up another emulator because I have a script just to run like three emulators. I make, thing, make sure things run right. So this one is a little bit more complex. I don't know if you've ever seen 3D on the Nintendo. I know there's Virtual Racer, but that used a separate chip in the cartridge to draw polygons. So this is just using software that kind of jiggles and that rotates. And this is uh, sprites. 
the scroll B, scroll A, and uh, no, scroll A, and then scroll B behind jittering. And the source code for these are going to be in the little CD. If you come to me at 9, because I don't have it burned yet, but if you come to me at 9, I'll show you. This is kind of like a little mini game. So you can jump over that, you can jump over the keyboard. Oh, God! Commander Keen has to jump on those. And Commander Keen turns out to be a dick. You could just set him there and he'll jump forever and score points forever. So, <laughs> Scroll B is in the background. I have kind of a parallax thing because we can control it line by line. That goes slower, that goes faster, that goes faster. And holy shit, that goes a lot more faster than everything else. So, oh, he jumped into the air. That's a bug. You can't jump while you're jumping. So, it was part of a demo. Like, it's, it was very specific. It was going to actually be played out by the demo program. So, you wouldn't play it. So, it's not full collision detection or anything like that. So, I'll show you the data for one of those at least. I'll show you the VAX. And I'll put the source code for the not working demo too. You have a lot of art examples and stuff like that. Uh, so that's the VAX. You can see it all here. These aren't the map. That's just on there. I have a separate map. Uh, so that's just so I know where the sprites are and it gets drawn right. So you can scroll each plane individually if you want. There's plane A. And uh, the score doesn't get scrolled. It just stays there. And uh, you get the idea. I know it wasn't really complete, but see how much time I have left here. But uh, now we get into audio and come up to me because if you have questions, I'll let you know. And uh, we should get people uh, running and making programs. And I want to add, add one thing, though, before Lewis begins to speak about the audio uh, subsystem. If anyone wants to write a demo and anyone wants to work on art, and work on sounds, come to me, uh, preferably before the demo party is over. We'll come up with a demo group name and write a demo. I'll do code for next year. Uh, that way I afford the opportunity to uh, build the tools better and stuff like that for your use. So, my friend Lewis, in a minute. Thank you. Hello. Hi. My name is Luis Gonzalez, and I'll be talking about uh, a little bit about how the Genesis Audio works. Plugging the audio source. Let's start that right. Okay. A little background of myself. I have. Um, I'm a third year student at NYU. I have uh, no electronics experience before starting this project. Um, I couldn't tell you the, the negative side to a capacitor. Uh, I started this project about five months ago. Um, so these are my adventures of creating and learning about the, how the Genesis, this little device, how it produces audio, more at the hardware level. And I got interested in um, video game music uh, what video game music are, these little files. I'll start a playlist so you can hear what they sound like. Video game music can represent many things. It could be uh, NSF files, which uh, what you're hearing right now is a Nintendo NSF file. Small 19K file. There's a soundtrack. Uh, some of them contain like the ROM information from the game. Others contain a log file of all the registers sent to the sound chip. Um, there are multiple different formats. The one I was interested in is the VGM, 
which uh, 